Hi friends, my name is Benjamin, and today I want to tell you another heartbreaking story. Gail Katz, born on March 8, 1956 in Brooklyn, New York, grew up in a family with two additional siblings, a sister and a brother. Despite excelling academically as a teenager and graduating a year ahead of her peers, Gail's path took a different turn when she entered college. Instead of maintaining her academic success, she became engrossed in a lifestyle of partying, leading to her eventual decision to drop out. This choice deeply disappointed her conservative parents, who held traditional views on life. They believed that Gail's only prospect for a successful future was to marry a wealthy man. Gail's mother, employed in the hospital emergency department, strongly advocated for her to pursue a doctor as a life partner, but Gail resisted, choosing to prioritize socializing and dating over a committed relationship. Eventually, Gail lost control of her life, grappling with depression and attempting suicide multiple times. Despite the initial surprise of her family, Gail introduced them to a man named Robert Bierenbaum, whom mutual friends had connected them with. Dr. Robert Bierenbaum, a young and promising individual, appeared to be an ideal match for both Gail and her family. Coming from a successful cardiologist father, he pursued a career in medicine, completing his residency as a plastic surgeon at Brooklyn Maimonides Medical Center. Beyond his impressive educational background, Robert possessed charm, linguistic skills, and a love for skiing, but his greatest passion lay in aviation. He held a pilot's license and often arranged romantic airborne dates for Gail. She relished these adventures, and he appreciated her genuine interest in his passions. Consequently, their bond deepened rapidly, leading to their eventual marriage. However, as with many love stories, theirs did not culminate in a happily ever after. On July 7, 1985, a Sunday, Robert Bierenbaum arrived alone at his sister's residence in Montclair, New Jersey, USA, around 6.30 p.m. The occasion was his nephew's birthday, and his sister hosted a celebration for him. Both Robert and his wife, Gail Katz, were invited to the gathering. However, Robert informed his sister and father that Gail was not accompanying him due to an earlier disagreement they had that day. According to Robert, Gail had left their Manhattan apartment around 11 a.m. to visit Central Park, and she had not returned home by the time he left for the party, prompting him to attend alone. On his way back from the celebration, Robert made a stop at the residence of his friend, Dr. Scott Baranoff. At this point, Robert appeared distressed and attempted to reach his apartment's landline multiple times without success. He confided in Scott about the morning's argument with Gail, mentioning that she had left wearing casual attire and had not been in contact with him since. Upon returning to his Manhattan apartment, Robert found Gail absent. He contacted her former psychology teacher, Dr. Yvette Face, to discuss the argument. Robert informed Yvette that Gail had left earlier in the day to sunbathe at Central Park. Yvette advised him to inform the police and inquire with the apartment complex's doorman regarding Gail's whereabouts, to which Robert agreed he would do. The following evening on July 8th at 9 p.m., Robert reached out to Detective Virgilio Dalsas for the first time. He informed the detective that Gail had left their apartment at 11 a.m. the previous day, and he hadn't had any contact with her since. Robert explained that he had waited for Gail at their apartment until 5.30 p.m., but she didn't return, prompting him to leave for his nephew's party at his sister's house. As Robert was the last person known to have seen Gail, the detective urged him to provide all the details he could to aid in finding her. Robert mentioned to the detective that Gail had previously attempted to take her own life. He also expressed concerns to friends that Gail might have harmed herself, citing information from her therapist, Dr. Sybil Baran, who had allegedly informed him about Gail's suicidal tendencies. The search for Gail commenced, but the police faced significant challenges due to the lack of substantial leads. Despite their efforts to gather more information from Robert, he did not respond to their repeated messages until July 10th, days after reporting her missing. During this conversation with Detective O'Malley, Robert inquired about the progress of the investigation 
and agreed to meet three days later to revisit the details of the last day he saw Gale. As time passed, police grew increasingly suspicious that Robert might be withholding crucial information. Several incidents troubled them, including an encounter on July 14th when some of Gale's friends, including Marianne Dessessar, were actively searching for her and distributing missing person posters. During this interaction, Robert suggested to Marianne that he believed Gale was on a week-long shopping spree at Bloomingdale's, a statement that raised red flags for investigators. Additionally, on another occasion, he mentioned to Gale's mother an odd comment about the cat falling ill and needing the rug cleaned. They found it peculiar. The details he recounted regarding the events of July 7th varied depending on who he spoke to. Interestingly, he didn't inform the police about the argument he had with Gail on Sunday morning before her departure at 11 a.m., despite having mentioned it to his family and some friends. Instead, he informed the police that the argument took place the night before she went missing, citing financial matters as the cause. He asserted that they reconciled afterward, even mentioning a romantic dinner he prepared for Gail upon their return to their apartment on July 6th, stating that she went to Central Park the next morning at 11 a.m. Despite repeated questioning by the police to ensure he disclosed all events of July 7th, he maintained that he remained in the apartment until leaving for the party at 5.30 p.m. However, this conflicted starkly with what he told Gail's friends, claiming he searched for her in Central Park between 11 a.m. and 5.30 p.m., even alleging finding her towel and suntan oil there. Remarkably, Despite the significance of this information to Gail's disappearance, he did not share it with the police. Robert informed the detective that he had spoken to the doorman at their apartment complex, who remembered seeing Gail leave at 11 a.m. but not returning. However, when questioned by the police, the doorman claimed he didn't see Robert or Gail that day. Moreover, when Detective Dalsas requested to search the apartment in July after Gail's initial disappearance report, Robert only responded to the request on September 12th and allowed entry on September 30th, but with limitations. The police were not permitted to conduct searches for blood or hair samples. As suspicion regarding Robert's potential involvement in Gail's disappearance grew, the police delved into the state of their marriage, discovering a far from perfect relationship described as toxic by acquaintances. Their relationship wasn't always tumultuous. They met in the early 80s when Gail was in college and Robert was a surgical resident in Manhattan. Initially, Robert went to great lengths to impress Gail, showcasing his skills as a pilot and his proficiency in multiple languages, appearing very romantic. Their relationship was even described as magical in the beginning. However, things took a turn and they began arguing more frequently in the months leading up to Gail's disappearance. Gail's sister, Elaine Katz, recounted to the police an incident where she witnessed Robert forcefully feeding food to Gail at a restaurant, which deeply unsettled her. This was just one of several concerning occurrences discovered by the police. Both friends and family described Robert as controlling, and Gail confided in a neighbor that she felt uneasy at home. Gail had previously reported an incident to the police where she alleged that Robert choked her into unconsciousness after catching her smoking on the balcony. Although Gail stayed with Robert after he agreed to see a psychiatrist, the psychiatrist later sent her a letter cautioning her that Robert might pose a serious threat to her life. Shortly before Gail was reported missing, she had started a new relationship and had decided to leave Robert. She confided in a friend that she planned to inform him of her decision to leave and file for divorce on July 7th. She also mentioned that if Robert refused to cooperate and agree to a settlement, she would reveal the letter she received from his psychiatrist warning her about the potential danger he posed, even considering showing it to his colleagues. The police found that the accumulation of circumstantial evidence pointed to Robert's involvement in Gail's disappearance. However, a significant obstacle remained. Gail had yet to be located. The search for Gail continued as her family and friends persisted in their efforts to uncover the truth about her disappearance. However, Robert appeared unconcerned. 
he spent considerable time in the Hamptons, attending various parties and initiating relationships with other women. In September 1985, a woman named Dr. Roberta Karnofsky moved in with him at their marital home, and they were in a relationship for about a year. Throughout this period, despite ongoing efforts, no trace of Gale was found, and no arrests were made. Although no arrests had been made, Gale's disappearance remained an active and open investigation, with Chief Investigator Detective Andy Rosenzweig revisiting the evidence. Aware of Robert's passion for flying and his status as a licensed pilot, Detective Rosenzweig focused on checking flight logs at the New Jersey airport. It was known that Robert often rented planes from there. Investigation into the records revealed that on July 7, 1985, Robert rented a Cessna 172 plane at Caldwell Airport in Fairfield, New Jersey at 4.30 p.m., returning it after one hour and 56 minutes. However, Robert had altered the date on his own flight log to the following day, July 8th. Detective Rosenzweig's discovery raised questions. Why did Robert attempt to conceal this flight? Detective Rosenzweig strongly suspected that Robert was responsible for Gail's death, theorizing that he had killed her and disposed of her body in the Atlantic Ocean. Robert's flight records indicated that he had sufficient time to make a round trip of approximately 165 miles over a portion of the ocean. However, lacking Gail's body, the district attorney's office felt there wasn't adequate evidence to secure a conviction. Four years after Gail's disappearance in May 1989, a torso washed up on Staten Island. At that time, DNA testing was not yet available. Instead, an X-ray technician compared an old chest X-ray with the torso and confirmed it belonged to Gail. The torso was released to her family, who held a burial service for Gail. Despite this identification, no charges were filed, and Robert relocated to Las Vegas, where he established a successful plastic surgery practice, continued dating, and became well-regarded in the community. In 1996, he married Janet Shallot, and they later moved to North Dakota, where they had a daughter. Despite Robert's apparent moving on, Detective Rosenzweig remained haunted by the unsolved case of Gail's disappearance and decided to revisit it a decade later when forensic DNA analysis had become available. With Gail's family's consent, the torso was exhumed for testing, which ultimately revealed that it did not belong to Gail. Despite the absence of Gail's body, the police and the DA's office believed they had sufficient evidence to arrest and charge Robert with second-degree murder. Robert pleaded not guilty to the charges. The case against Robert relied solely on circumstantial evidence. No eyewitnesses, forensic evidence, confession, or body were present. Nonetheless, the prosecution argued that despite the circumstantial nature of the evidence, it unmistakably pointed to one conclusion, Robert's guilt in Gale's murder. They contended that he killed Gale in their apartment upon learning of her intention to leave him. According to the police, Robert then spent hours dismembering Gale's body before flying a plane over the ocean to dispose of it between Montauk Point, New York, and Cape May, New Jersey. The prosecution's task was to convince the jury that it was feasible for Robert to dispose of the body while piloting the plane, alleging that he acted alone. They presented four expert witnesses and a video demonstrating how such an act could be accomplished to support their argument. The jury received testimony from four expert witnesses, New York City's chief medical examiner, a seasoned New York City police pilot, an aviation safety inspector, and an airline transport pilot flight instructor FAA flight test examiner. They asserted that Robert, a surgical resident and pilot, could feasibly dismember a body the size of Gales, five feet, three in tall, 110 pounds, within a mere 10 minutes. They further testified that he could pack her dismembered limbs into a flight bag and transport them through an unmonitored rear exit of his apartment building, then walk two blocks to his car unnoticed. The experts also stated that Robert could load the flight bag onto the Cessna 172 plane without detection, piloting it over the Atlantic Ocean to dispose of Gale's remains. 
they noted that the rented plane was relatively straightforward to operate. The prosecution presented evidence of a motive to the jury, revealing Gail's affair and her desire to leave Robert. She had made plans, borrowed money, and was determined to depart on July 7th. The court learned that Robert failed to inform anyone, not even his family, of his flying activities on that day. The altered flight log was presented as evidence, suggesting he flew on the following day instead. The court was informed about the tumultuous nature of Robert and Gail's relationship, including allegations of domestic violence. Robert himself had previously described their arguments as intense and volatile. There were accounts of him expressing hatred towards Gail and making statements indicating a desire to harm her. Testimony revealed both direct threats and perceived threats made by Robert. In the autumn of 1983, Gail contacted her cousin, Hillard Wees, an attorney, and disclosed that she and Robert had a heated argument during which he choked her, rendering her unconscious for the first time, although it wasn't the first instance of him choking her. Additionally, Gail's therapist, Dr. Sybil Baran, provided testimony. Contrary to Robert's claims that Gail was suicidal, Dr. Baran informed the jury that she had never discussed such concerns with Robert and did not believe Gail was suicidal. The defense contended that Robert was innocent, presenting Gail as someone with mental health challenges, a drug dependency, and unstable relationships with other men. They called a witness who claimed to have seen Gail in a bagel shop days after her disappearance. However, the prosecution highlighted to the jury that the witness's description of the woman did not match Gail's. After deliberating for five and a half hours, the jury found Robert guilty of second-degree murder. Consequently, he was sentenced to 20 years to life in prison. Robert appealed the verdict, but was ultimately unsuccessful in overturning it. After completing 20 years of his sentence, Robert made a confession for the first time during a 2020 parole board hearing. He admitted to killing Gail and disposing of her body by throwing it out of an airplane, aligning with the prosecution's theory of events. Robert recounted that they argued and he became overwhelmed, ultimately attacking and strangling Gail. He then proceeded to fly an airplane, open the door, and discard her body over the ocean. When questioned about his motive for the murder, Robert attributed it to his immaturity and inability to manage his anger effectively. Despite his confession, Gail's body has never been recovered. What do you think of today's story? Write your opinion about this case in the comments. I thank you for your attention and recommend subscribing to the channel as well as clicking on the bell to not miss new videos that are released daily. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. See you soon.